We're now going to talk about the bisector of an angle in terms of the dot product. Very important implied problem. If you're doing anything having to do with computer graphics and you want to put something on the bisector of A, well, how do you calculate it? So here's our setup. We have our triangle A, B, and C. We have once again chosen an arbitrary origin. And now the vectors that point from that arbitrary point to each of the vertices are called capital A vector, B vector, and C vector. Now we're going to bisect the vector A. It will land at the point M. And we'll think of it as once again M vector, which is the vector that points from this point to M, capital M vector. And the question is, how do you express M in terms of A, B, and C? I'll give you one little strategic hint. And that's just for convenience. Introduce these vectors that point from A to B. Call it little b vector. And the vector that points from A to C right here, call it little c vector. Do it in terms of those. Clearly, little b is b minus a, and little c is c minus a. But that brings the problem right to where the action takes place. Here is my elegant way of doing it. Imagine a unit vector that points in this direction. I'll call it, uh, I'm running out of letters here, I'll call it N1, a unit vector in this direction. That's easy. That's B divided by the length of B. And imagine a unit vector in this direction. I'll call it N2. That's also easy, because that's C divided by the length of C. Now, if I, because they're equal lengths, and so we have basically an isosceles triangle, if I were to find the average of N1 and N2, or even their sum, N1 plus N2, that will point along the bisector. You guys are with me on that? N1 plus N2 points along the bisector. So let's write it down. So here's our work. N1 plus N2. Here we have something pointing along the bisector, which equals this expression gives us is the proportions that we need to combine B and C to produce the bisector. The coefficients need to be proportional to 1 over B and 1 over C. But they have to add up to 1. So here are my coefficients that are proportional to 1 over B and 1 over C, but add up to 1. Those are my two coefficients. Do you see how they are proportional? They're both proportional as a, as a pair. They're proportional to 1 over B and 1 over C, right? Because they're both 1 over B and 1 over C divided by the same denominator. But because of how I chose the denominator, the, these two coefficients add up to 1, because that's the other thing I wanted. That's what we know from all of our previous discussions, is that we're putting, if we're putting B and C into a linear combination, and we want to land on this line, the coefficients have to add up to 1. That's like one of our main points so far. So all I did here was come up with two coefficients that add up to 1, that are proportional from this other argument to 1 over B and 1 over C. Now, can I simplify this? Those are the coefficients. So here is the final answer. We need, I'm leaving a little bit of space. This space will have A plus so that we bring everything back to this point. So you'll see that in a moment. And to this we must add vector A because what this expression is, is relative to this point right here. Do you see our vectors B and C come out of this point? So this portion of the expression is this vector right here that I have in red. 
So if I want to refer it back to our common origin, I need to add capital A to it. Okay? And that's the expression for the bisector. Now, I didn't write dot products in it, but you can see that all it involves is linear combinations and dot products. Linear combinations, then to evaluate the lengths, you will evaluate the dot products and take the square roots, and then another linear combination. So all it is is linear combinations and dot products. If you were doing this on the computer and you had the dot product as a function at your disposal, you would be able to calculate this by sector no problem. Yeah. What this also is, is the proof, if we focus on this part alone, of, I think it's called the triangle bisector theorem. What the triangle bisector theorem states is that when you draw a bisector and you look at the length of this segment compared to the length of this segment, you will find that the length of this segment divided by this side, by the length of this side, equals the length of this segment divided by this side. Because of all of these problems that we've been doing with figuring out where the point lies, right, and how to place it exactly if you're given the relative proportions, if you think that through, I would like to save it as something for you to do. You'll just have to think that through and, and realize that this shows exactly that proportionality. So this is also an algebraic proof of the triangle bisector theorem. So another great application of the dot product. It's an algebraic proof. There is, of course, a geometric proof. And it's very, very beautiful. It's one of my favorite things. It requires an additional construction. But that additional construction requires a lot of ingenuity and a lot of insight. And that's what makes that fun. This calculation, this approach, requires no ingenuity and no insight and that's what makes this approach fun. So you should always know two diametrically opposed approaches to the same problem, two or more, as many as possible. All views, all points of views are great. It's the plurality that's really valuable. Okay, so that's the bisector of the angle.